We don't uh, want, you know, this. Right. We don't want some lost Pegasus nonsense going on at this uh, thing. Oh, uh, do not mention that. You know uh, what? I don't care. I don't care who you are. That's funny right there. That is funny right there. You know what's worse? We were there. Put the cards down. <laughs> All right. He needs a red. Good. He needs a red. Good morning, Everfree Northwest. <laughs> That's right. Internet. Mention that, mention that again. Well, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome to Heroes and Villains. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> it's me, it's me, it's that good old MC of MLP, Mike Check Demis Daniel from Canterlot Radio, and, and, if you haven't noticed, real life Steven Universe. <laughs> Guess I can't win every game of Steven Tag, maybe my name, but it's just not my game. <laughs> we are going to have a lot of fun today because I get to do a panel with one of the coolest people on the face of the earth. And no, I'm not talking John Delancey. Uh, that was I yesterday. said on the, on the face of this earth. Well, anyway, uh, joining me right now is a very talented voice actress who I consider a good friend. For nearly 20 years, she has been providing the voices for many countless characters. Whether you were mesmerized by her spatula flipping as Ukio Kawonji, whether you uh, had a, a soundproof window shattered by Sango and her boomerang, that was a $900 uh -huh. boomerang window you shattered! <laughs> sorry, sorry. Painful issues from the past. Or whether you love her as the uh, trying to control all of equality Starlight Glimmer from My Little Pony. She is a very talented Ooh. voice actress who I think deserves a big round of applause from you guys. She is the one, the only, Miss Kelly! Show it up! Welcome! Welcome! Welcome. Welcome. <laughs> now, if you want, give her the super creepy smile. Is my mic on? Oh, there it is. I just needed to get closer. Yeah, so, Kelly, how are you enjoying Everfree so far? It's wonderful! <laughs> <laughs> I'm having so much fun! Ooh. No, it's really great. I'm having a great time. Um, it's my first con ever. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you. No, it's been really great. It was. It's been such a great way to start off in this pony world. Everyone's been awesome. So let's go ahead and dive right in. Of course, the subject of this panel is heroes and villains. But before we start into the nitty gritty, let's give you guys a bit of a rundown of what's going to happen in the next hour. We are going to learn a little bit about some of the different roles and villains that Kelly has voiced in her lengthy career. You get to share some of your favorite moments with her and ask her some questions about the character she's played. And you know what? We're going to laugh and we're going to laugh. Are we going to cry? We're going to what? Are we going to cry? <laughs> uh, no. Only, uh, unless they're... We'll only see. Only if you're mean to us. By the way, did you know? It, it, is, is it up there? Is it slide there? I, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm we can't see it. There we go. There we go. Next, Next one. Next. Next. Beautiful. Did you know that according to behind the voice actors, Kelly here has nearly a hundred different characters she has provided the voice for. That that she's credited that, that we know. There might be some that you know we don't know. That we like to. Well, in the two, in the nearly two decades she has been voice acting, she has provided countless voices for so many unique characters in the realms of video games, <laughs> cartoons, and anime. So, Kelly, how, how has the journey been? You know, you're starting off, you know, you started at the, at the age of four, I believe. Uh, well, if, it, if my parents' living room counts, but <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I started working professionally at 13. Oh, 13. Wow. Yeah. Wow. But, um, you yeah. started at 13, you know, I think Ranma was one of my first gigs. I was in grade eight, yes. so it's a freshman. So, yeah, so, um, that's actually uh, how appropriate that is because our first hero subject is Ukio Kawonji. Oh, she's a yes. giant spatula. Now this was all the way back in the 1990s, and you know, yeah. the 90s were uh, you know pretty excellent time. And one of the very first anime to really become mainstream in America was, of course, Rama One. Hand. And you play the, this awesome character uh, Ukio Kawonji who is not only a skilled fighter and master cook, but is one of the title character's oldest friends. And, you know, and the funny thing is, you know, Rama being, you know, the airhead that he is, thought that Ukyo was, you know, a boy, which is really crazy. Look at her! <laughs> yeah, how could you think that's not a boy? Though, though, though when she did come to, uh, to, to a Japan, 
she did dress as a boy when yes. she entered into Romney's school. So, you know, and we, and we saw some shenanigans there, which we'll show, actually show a clip. We have clips to show you guys. So Ooh, if you've never seen yeah. this, if you've never seen any of these shows, you're going to get a chance to see a clip. And I encourage you, if you like what you see, please buy these. Um, Rama's actually now on Blu-ray DVD from Viz Media. And it's beautiful, restored, ukiyo looks hmm. delicious. <laughs> she doesn't look like a boy. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about playing Ukiyo, especially as your first role in career. Well, I think it was definitely my first anime role. So, and I had no idea what I was in for. I had no idea about the popularity of the show. This was like pre-internet, so you couldn't Google anything. Right. And it was it was fantastic. It's such a crazy show. Uh, I made sure I went out and had some okonomiyaki, which is the food that Ukyo cooks all the time in her little cafe, which is also delicious if you guys have never had okonomiyaki. And it was just really fun. I had no idea what I was doing, but uh, I don't know, they gave me the job. <laughs> and that ran for about nine years. So, yeah, we did hundreds of episodes. It was pretty incredible. And then went right into Inuyasha. So it was like 15 years of you also, you also did several uh, movies as well. Uh, Ni Hao Makan yeah, Kai, Big that's Trouble, right. Nicole of China, you know, some OVAs as well. And, and <laughs> this is still one of the anime that is true to the nature of it. This is what, one of the anime that got me interested in, in anime altogether. Because it was just so over the top. It was so wacky. It was so crazy. And I remember seeing, back then, you know, they, had the, um, they had commercials for Oop for Rama and on the Pokemon VHSs. After I saw that, I was like, dude, I gotta give you video. And I, I see this, and it's amazing, it's funny, it's wacky, it's not like anything I've ever seen, not even on Toonami. And, and by the way, how could this never end up on Toonami? That, that is my biggest gripe. This was a great show, great characters, great cast. I mean, he would be on Toonami and other shows, but you know, not, not for this, which is a real shame, because it's such a beautiful show. Thanks. Now, Screw you, now, now, you, now you said that <laughs> you, know, you had to look at wow. The question is, did you ever try wielding a giant spatula? I didn't. I've never, I've never owned one. So. Well, no, uh, are those guys with the 3D printer still <laughs> yeah, outside? Hey yeah. yeah. guys, make spatula. a giant spatula! <laughs> <laughs> no, no, they're, uh, they're asleep. Oh, it yeah. was her weapon of choice <laughs> also, though, so I think I'd go around whacking people with it. It's well, probably best that I don't well, have one. How would you guys like to see Ukiyo in action? So let's go to the very expensive Ever Free Tron 5000. Let's go to the clip. Roll it. <laughs> what? What? Uh, so, uh, okay, oh, we'll wait, we'll wait. Um. Technology is sometimes tricky. It is. Sometimes it doesn't work. We could do a puppet show instead. Yes. Who got a button? Who's got a button? Who button, a button? Button, button? Oh yeah, the army's growing. Okay, here we go. Excellent. Oh, right. How dare you joke around during a duel? I didn't call you out here to play patty cake, you know? Hey, is this any way from Fred's tag? Whatever happened to the good old days? Good old days? For who? What are you so mad for? Cut it out! Shut Hey, I ain't the one who ran off with your car. Gold man is. Look, I ain't the one who promised to take you along, so don't blame me, okay? Stay still. You know, I'm beginning to think you're mad at me or something. How dare you? How much more am I supposed to take? That's it. You're dead. <laughs> ah! Hot enough to fry an egg, literally. Hey, that's not a ring. It's a nonstick ring-shaped cooking surface. <laughs> and now for the next item on the menu. That's funny. Huh? Take a look. I've added a few of my own special ingredients to the recipe guaranteed to send you out of the frying pan and right into the fire. Huh? What is this junk? What did you put in here, Blue? It's just your ordinary batter. Plus a little rubber cement mixed in. <laughs> let me go! I'll let you go, no problem. <laughs> now for dessert! Ah, hot, 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 hot. 
Personally, I prefer my okonomiyaki without the noodles, but then again, I've always been more of a traditionalist at heart. Anyway, <laughs> could you pass me that plate over there? Would you stop thinking of your stomach for a minute and come help me? I forgot to oil the grill. Silly me. <laughs> this part's my own invention. Tempura flakes mixed with gunpowder. I would love to see Yu-Gi-Oh take on Gordon Ramsay. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Are you kidding me? This is horrible! <laughs> <laughs> uh, my mind's that, on her. Yep. That would make sense. That would make sense. So, anyway, um, you know, Ukiyo, of course, a really great character to get your, get your foot in the door. And, of course, just a, a great hero. And I, I notice this. A lot of the characters you play, you know, kind of start as, as you know, rival villains, but they eventually become heroes to the yeah, Sango was like that too. Yeah, we're going to talk about a little more about her later on in the panel though. Now we gotta get a we gotta get a little dark now. We talked about a hero. We gotta talk about a hero. Oh. Yeah, that's right. And this one, I think, you know, is one of your most underrated ones. But I love her so much. Let's get a little hexy. Let's talk about Scarlet Witch <laughs> from the X Men Evolution. Now, how many here have never seen X Men Evolution? Okay, Ooh. so I gotta do a little, I gotta do a little, uh, little foreshadowing here. Scarlet Witch is the daughter of Magneto, who, um, it, this is, and this is totally not, you know, not movie canon. So you're gonna just, just it, it's different. I don't know why it's not movie canon, but still. And she's also the, the sister of Quicksilver, who is, who is um, Pietro, mm -hmm. who is voiced by Richard Ian Cox. Mm -hmm. And um, she was locked away because she could not control her mutant powers because she was you know, tortured, abused. She was locked in an insane asylum, and she just has this unrivaled hatred for Quicksilver and Magneto. And she also has these supernatural abilities with this um, supernatural temper. It, it gets scary. So tell us, you know, playing such a emotionally damaged character, Scarlet Witch. Well, that was one of the first chances I had to play to play somebody with that kind of range. Before that, I'd always, you know, I'd always been cast kind of with my natural speaking voice, and and Wanda's really like growly, and I can even do it now. She's kind of screamy. Well, um, you did it now? I think with all these uh, nice lights here, we go. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and it was, I don't know, it was great. It was such a, it was like, really great voice acting on that show. David Kay and oh gosh, uh, Scott McNeil, Kirby Morrow, Brad Swale. Uh, Brad Swale. Yeah, great okay. cast. Um, and and then to be part of the X Men was also pretty amazing to do something marvelly. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was great. I know we joked that, that, that you know it was a shame that you weren't in the Age of Ultron movie with the Avengers, you know, because Scarlet Witch was. Well, they asked me, but I couldn't. Yeah. Do yeah. So, she she you know she didn't want top billing over Robert Downey Jr. Exactly. Yes. And Robert, you know, Robert was like, you know, well, what you give to No, 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 you're Robert Downey Jr. Yeah. So this couldn't be my last one. Yeah. Like, no, Robert, you take it. It's fine. Chris Hemsworth wouldn't talk to her, and that made her upset. <laughs> he doesn't need to talk to me. Yeah. Well, anyway, <laughs> he doesn't need to talk at all. Well, anyway, fine. let's go ahead and uh, see Scarlet Witch in action. Technology. <laughs> Sometimes we. Here we go. Uh oh. Bad vibe. Oh, 
stuck here. It's no good, Scott. We can't stop her. She's too strong. We've got to retreat. No, it's not over yet. Yes, it is. Let's go. weapon, the Scarlet Witch. You were great, Wanda. Man, I never thought you could be this in control. If our father had known... Your father, not mine. He'll pay for what he did to me. Wow. That was, that was, that was something, wasn't it? She does tend to monologue, you know. <laughs> and, and of course, you know, uh, spoiler, just you know, because of course, uh, Magneto uses the power of Mesmero to try to alter the image, alter the memory. And, you know, make, make, make him not, make him a little bit, a little more father daughterish. But you know, she still at the end, she still finds that resentment and hatred towards him. But this was a cool thing. brainwashed her. <laughs> yeah, well, pretty much, pretty much. The one thing that was really funny was Toad was always trying to hit on her. Yeah, she was always beating him up. Yeah, and, yes. And, and, and he even went to extreme lengths to borrow uh, Kurt's hollow ball. Changes image. And of course, at, at the end of the episode where they fight Magneto, she does give him a kiss. And the, Even Toads deserve a kiss. Yeah. <laughs> well, anyway, you know, what do you guys think of Scarlet Witch? You know, pretty, pretty awesome. Woo! And of course, you can check out the entire X Men Evolution series on the official Marvel YouTube channel, all four seasons. And you can check out, you know, yeah. Kelly and Kirby Morrow and David Kay and Scott McNeil. Venus Terza. Venus Terzo, cool. Brad Swale, so many people on there. Well, anyway, we talked enough about Scarlet Witch. Let's let's, let's talk about a, a, a hero that you know, little underappreciated, but I think is super super duper awesome. That would be Mystique Sonia from Hero 108. Has anyone here seen Hero 108? Well, a few people have. It's it, it, it's it's kind of one of those shows that you know you really. You get here maybe a few things about it, but you're like proving the internet late one night and you see, you're all like, okay, let's, let's check it out. So, you know, this is a, a really unique show because this, it's about this, um, this, this world where there are these different kingdoms and, you know, they're, you know, kind of ununited. So this, um... Animal kingdoms. Animal kingdoms, right, right. Even though there's that one bird guy with a human head. What is that? Just because. <laughs> No question. And so, so there's this, this 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 big group called you know Big Green, and it comprises of different teams of heroes, and they have to go and try to reunite the castles under you know, under you know, Team Big Green. And of course, in that show, you play Mystique Sonia, who is really a, a, an adorable and awesome at the same time. I, I don't know how that's possible. It just is. So she, she may be rough and tough on the outside, but she's a total girl. So. Hero 108 was one of those shows where I read the first script and went, I don't understand this at all. It's going to be really popular. <laughs> it was just like booger jokes and fart yeah. jokes and she's, her, she whips people with her tongue and uh, she gives them superpowers by spitting these little seeds and they grow into these little rice buns and she feeds the members of her team. And they it's just like bananas. Um, <laughs> It's really great. <laughs> that was a fun one. And really fun to record. Gene Simmons has tongue in me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, her tongue's like as long as her yeah, that's, that's a pretty good tongue. <laughs> so, um, of course, her weapon of choice besides her powerful tongue is her, is her hat, uh, Yaksha. Yaksha. Yeah. Which, you know, is like a, a living hat. You know, you know, you know, you know, dressed to kill never came into more terms than Mystique Sonia. Those are his legs there. Yeah. She, she doesn't really walk. have to walk. She just has the hat walk him, you know. <laughs> and, and, that, and, that, and just the animation is adorable in that show. Yeah. And, and really cute. again, another great cast of, of people in there. Um, I, think, uh, I think Brian Drummond is, is in it. Brian and Ian Corlett and um, Adrian Pitcher. They're the three. It's me and the boys. Yeah. And yeah, we, we laughed a lot in yes. those sessions. They're just bananas. All of them are playing four or five different voices and. <laughs> it's awesome. Yeah, that was a fun one. Well, you know what? Because, you know, why should we break the streak? Let's go to another clip. Oh, wrong, 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 wrong one, wrong run, back, back. Oh, God, technology! <laughs> it's gone horribly wrong. There we go, there we go. We've been in there a long time. It's
It's not showing. The video's not showing. Technical difficulties. Yeah. Technical difficulties! <laughs> director would just go, okay, you're beating seven people up with your tongue, go. And I'm going like, in the microphone. Slobber all over the place. But but it was fun. That's my job. But it, was, it was fun to play her though, wasn't it? Oh, so, look at her. So much fun. Yeah, so much fun. And, yeah. if, and if you guys want to check out Hero 108, if you can check out the Kabillion YouTube channel. They have all the episodes up there. The cool thing is, these are like little 15 minute episodes. It's like a little mini cartoon of vitamin. So you, know, you can just pop it, you know? <laughs> you can binge watch it without really binging. You can watch 40 of them, whatever. Yeah. And then it's five days later. No big deal. <laughs> but that, that, again, this was a really cool show because it was a, 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 a their concept. And they, you know, they rolled with it and it got a lot of attention. It was based on a video game, I believe, initially. Yeah, and, and, and this one, there was, I, I know we talked about this a while back. There was this actually an app for the Hero 108. Let me see if it's uh, still on the iTunes store. If it's still there, you know, you guys can download and check it out. I, I know that um, you told me, like, during the, some of the sessions, you would actually play the Hero 108 game. And, uh, yes, it's still on there. The Hero 108 game mm. from Gamania Digital Entertainment. And you can play as... Uh, Jumpy Bunny, uh, Lynn, Mighty Ray, and of course, Mystique Celia. If you play uh, as my character, you have to go blah, blah, blah. That's, blah, blah, blah. that's the rules. No deal. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> so, Mystique Celia Hero 108, obscure. But I don't think they're as obscure as this next character. <laughs> that's good. Oh. Princess Morbucks from Powerpuff Girls Z. Okay, who has never even heard of this show? I okay. have. Okay. I have. We all, who are, we've all seen the original Powerpuff Girls, right? Yep. We all seen it. Staple of 90s Cartoon Network programming. 
Apparently, it was so popular in Japan that they decided to make an anime version of it, and I don't know how to explain this, but it, it kind of really didn't follow the, 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 the format that they had that Ginny Tartakovsky came up with, or, or, or Craig McCracken. You know, for Mojo Dojo, he doesn't do the, you know, I talk like this, because if I talk like this, you will know that I am talking. Or I talk like this, you will know that I'm talking because I'm talking to you. You know, just, you know, just general bad guy stuff. And I'm not saying, you know, maybe it didn't, it got lost in translation, but it, just, it was a weird show. And get this, never aired in the United States. It may have aired in Canada and Europe and Australia, never made its way to, uh, to Cartoon Network in America. And that's one of the greatest, that's the greatest shows, because this, this is a really crazy show. And again, you play Princess, who is a spoiled rich brat. Typecasting. <laughs> <laughs> if I had a nickel for every rich spoiled brat Kelly played, I'd have, I'd have enough to oh, find out. the but, rich part. Yeah. yeah. So um, in, in this one, you know, whereas we know in the American version, she's just, you know, stuck up spoiled. However, in the anime version, she lives in the shadow of her sister Duchess, which, you know, causes her to lash out and act out and, you know, crave attention, you know? Kind of like me at this panel. Aww. Aww. Dark panel got dark. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, do you remember experiencing playing this character? And, uh, can you tell us a little bit about voicing it? Yeah, I, I just remember James, the director, kept saying, you need, you can't, you're too worried about making her likable or finding some shred of like decency in her just more annoying more annoying i apologize in advance for whatever this clip is but um yeah she's just a brat just a brat and i do remember didn't she have like a musical episode or something too or she joined yes she decided to like start a band i believe and was I, awful. I, I, I believe i'm not sure youtube kind of is yeah very that was in there on, too on clips um yeah she's just but, a, look at her she's a brat well why don't we look at her with uh, another clip <laughs> Whenever you guys are ready. Here we go. someone else? Nope. Oh, no. No, no. All right, forget it. My, uh, <laughs> my, uh, my, my, my 
technology is wasted. <laughs> but anyway, our, our next character we're going to talk about, we, you know, I don't have a clip for this one, but I think she's important because, you know, there are a bunch of little girls here in the audience and, and kid girl. We all grew up with her. Let's talk a I little... I heard of this one. How do you pronounce that? Barbie. Ba ba bear... Be Barbie. Ba bar we're talking about Barbie. <laughs> so, of course, um, you play the iconic uh, doll in the popular uh, series of movies. Now, there were a few you didn't play her, but you know, now you're back with authority. <laughs> and, uh, and, and for the most part, you know, you're, you play the, the hero. So, what is it like getting to play an iconic character like Barbie? Oh, amazing. I mean, I, it's the coolest thing is having done it for the past 14 years. There are fans now that started watching when they were kids that are now in their teens or early 20s that grew up watching them. So that's been pretty incredible. And for like a short, kind of flat-chested girl from Canada, brunette, to be able to play this tall, blonde, American icon bombshell, that's like, that's amazing. That's kind of the scoop of the century. Um, it's a character that I never get to play, like, on camera or in real life. Um, yeah, she's incredible. And Mattel's been lovely. I get a Christmas box from them every year. It's just this, yeah, it's a dream come true to be able to play this yeah. super, super superstar, super star, yeah. but not get recognized in real life. It's, like, the best of both. Well, we should give her some recognition right now. Oh, come on. Yeah, thank you. It's nice to not get recognized at the grocery store when I'm in my pajamas. So. <laughs> <laughs> Kelly Sheridan as Barbie. Affection not included. <laughs> Affection sold separately. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm surprised you haven't been upstage yet by Ken. Oh, yeah. A lot of this, he's lot of, an accessory. A lot of this <laughs> dreams. She has many accessories and he's one of them. Now what, what's cool is, you know, you were a villain in a Barbie in a Christmas Carol. You know, you were the bad guy, you know, the brat, you know, and you know, that, that, that's kind of crazy. You know, because who can yeah. imagine Barbie being a jerk? Yeah, no. it was like a, it was a, kind of a neat thing for them to do. She plays Scrooge. Well, she tells, she reads a story about Christmas Carol and plays, yeah, she plays a Scrooge-like character. Um, and of course, you're a hero in pretty much everything else. Yeah, she's she's kind, clever, and brave. So, so what, what what is your favorite movie that you've done as Barbie? Um, I liked the Three Musketeers. That was pretty fun. Um, the motion capture they did for that, they had a fencing team, a women's fencing team that they did the mocap for. And it was kind of cool to see her fight with a sword. They're always thinking of new cool stuff to do with her. Yeah. She's, she's, that one was she's pretty fun. been a, a pop star princess, she's been a mermaid, I think her latest one, she's a superhero. She's a, yeah, like a kind of supergirl. Um, oh, and the other great one was the very first one we did, which was Nutcracker, where I got to work with Tim Curry, because... He's Tim Curry. The best. He's the best of the best of the best. I don't know. See, see, here's the thing about Tim Curry. You know, if you put Tim Curry in the same room as John Delancey, I think it's like I matter think that, and anti matter. I think, I don't think the, the universe, universe would. Because Tim Curry's got that evil, evil, evil voice. And it's just so sinister. You know, when you hear that, Tim Curry. That is Tim Flippin' Curry right there. I don't think the world can handle that. Awesome. Yeah, like Tim Curry and John Delancey yeah. come together, you know, that'd be like, that'd be, again, matter, any matter. We must work as a nation to ensure that that endeavor never comes to fruition. <laughs> Maybe Tim will be on the show on My Little Pony at one point. Ooh. 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 That would be beautiful. Moose. Yes. Well, un unfortunately, guys, I don't have a clip of Barbie because Mattel. <laughs> Copyright. So, um, so we're going to go ahead and move into our, into our next hero, which I think is one of your most prolific characters, certainly your most, one of your most longevity characters, and that is, of course, Sango from Inuyasha, a feudal fairy tale. Look at her. Oh, yeah. There we go. <laughs> so, so who here has not seen Inuyasha? <clears throat> wow. wow. Oh. Uh, quite a few. So, um, so for those who don't know, Sango is a demon slayer because in feudal Japan there were a lot of demons, and and Godzilla. Fact. But we but we, we never saw Godzilla in that one. Um, so she joins Inuyasha, the, the title character, and his crew after her family and her village is slain by by a, a demon trap set by the, uh, the the main villain of the show, Naraku. And while along this, we learn about her history and her relationship with her brother Kohaku. Who is who? You know who was who was killed by Naraku, but brought back to life through the Shikon Jewel with no memory of anything about her and their their family and history as demon slayers. 
So what is it like getting to play such a character who is such an emotionally involved character, you know, who is tough on the outside, but it does have a, a damage on the side on the inside? Well, that's her first episode. She loses her entire family. She's been raised to fight the very thing that kills all of them. It's like, it's heavy stuff, you guys. This <laughs> is not, it's like, yeah. Um, so, and, but then there's, there are scenes, she has this kind of love-hate relationship with one of the other characters, Moroku, so there's all these scenes where she's always beating him up with her giant, and I guess I play characters that have giant weapons, she has this giant boomerang, so she's always like beating him up and slapping him because he's, he's off gallivanting with other women. And, um, and he does something that we really can't talk about here at the con, because it's <laughs> Yeah, I don't think that's fine, PG. Um, so, so there's these funny scenes between two of them, and then these really tragic scenes where she's trying to get her brother back, even though he's just kind of a shell of who he used to be. He's just this puppet, basically. Um, and I don't know. She's great. Man, when it comes to she's puppets, amazing. when it comes to puppets, Narak, who is the master, master. <laughs> Wow. I know, I know, I know. How in the world, how in the world does real life Steven Universe have all this energy at, at 10 in the morning? I have no idea. Uh, but yeah, she's one of my favorites. Um, well, oh, and she has a tiny little cat that turns into a gigantic one oh, that also can fly wow. and has um, flames streaming out of her tail and she flies that around. Yes. Oh, the Japanese. Oh. Aren't they amazing? Yes. The things they let's, up. Let's, let's see Opal we'll try that. Yeah. Let us see Opal we'll try what Kilala is. But that's her traditional demon slaying gear she's wearing right now. Well, let's go ahead, and we've got a, a great clip right now. It's it's a really emotional one. Sango has just stolen Inuyasha's sword, Tetsaga, and has found her way back to Naraku's castle, hoping to exchange it for Kohaku's freedom. So let's go ahead and go to the clip. Stop lying! You're the one who killed my father and comrades! You coveted the stupid jewel! You're responsible for everything! People die because of the power of the sacred Shikon jewel, and people of its power. There's no reason why you should despise the sacred jewel as much as you do. Remember, Kohaku was revived because of the jewel's power. You made a promise to exchange the sword for Kohaku's life. So, what will you do? I despise you! I made no promise! You want my answer? Here it is! <laughs> For the record, that is not blood, that is hair. <laughs> it's you, the young lord of the castle. Kagawaki was a noble lord. He gave all the demon slayers proper burials. Ah, yes, and I was the one who ordered for your care after the massacre. You killed him. Kagawaki is still alive. At least according to those I fooled into thinking I'm him. can actually watch Kelly Asango in Inuyasha, the final act. The episodes are currently airing at 1.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on Toonami on Adult Swift. So you can watch her currently 
You should have watched her last night, but you probably didn't know that she was Sago, so. So we'll give you a. That's a, a lot of homework now. Yeah. Shows to watch. And now, as the French would say, the peace of the resistance. What? Hmm? Wait for it. Ta da! <laughs> we gotta talk a little story like that before we go. Uh, now, this character was introduced this current season of My Little Pony, and she's trying to use this idea of equality to control an entire village of ponies. And of course, Twilight and her friends come by, and they, they fall under your brainwashing spell. <laughs> evil, evil, evil. What could possibly go wrong? A lot. <laughs> yes, and that, it, now, now, now tell us about playing her, you know, it's, it, she's crazy. Uh, yeah, what can you say about her? She's amazing. Um, <laughs> I could say, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think, um, I love the show and have been wanting to play a role in the show forever. I've auditioned for, I think, pretty much every female character that, that, that they've held auditions for since, since the main six, since even, the very beginning. Even Twilight? Since day one. Every single one. Um, and, and was just told no every time, and it, I think eventually they just ran out of voiceover actresses in Vancouver. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we haven't roles, tried Sheridan yet. Let's, how many roles could Ashley and Andrea do? Let's toss something at her. Yeah, for um, a bone. And I was in, I was traveling in Southeast Asia, I was in a hotel, I was in a layover in Kuala Lumpur, and I got this email saying, can you record something there and, you know, email it to us. And I was jet lagged and thought, oh, I don't know, I've auditioned for every role in this show, it's never going to happen. Okay, fine, I guess I'll just suck it up and do it and sent it over and then heard the day I was flying back, okay, you're recording tomorrow, you got the part. Um, so, yeah, I guess I need to go to Kuala Lumpur every time I really need to. <laughs> it's like on the floor of my hotel room in a, in a, like a blanket fort with my iPad and my microphone. It's your good luck charm. Yeah, yeah luck. I guess so. Yeah, but this character, you know... We don't know. Have we seen the last of her? I don't know. We don't know. Ooh. It's a mystery. No, I hope not. I hope oh, not. I, I, I do hope not. Well, you do. I think there's. I think there's more for her to do. More. Wink, wink. Look, there's a moose. <laughs> what? What is it about? What is there's a moose? You know, <laughs> I, 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 you know I, I, what? We're actually, we're actually pressed for time. Let's just go ahead and go to our final clip. So cue it up on the expensive Evertron 5000. <laughs> <laughs> With that creepy smile! <laughs> Starlight, I think we might have one more friend joining us today. <gasps> Is this true? I, I think so, but I just want to be sure. If I agree to leave my cutie mark in the vault, I'll really be happier? Just look around! Equality has given us more happiness than you've ever known! And you wouldn't let me just live here in the village with my old cutie mark? Out of the question! A pony with a different cutie mark in our midst would destroy our entire philosophy! We are all equal here! Oh, how do you explain yeah. this? It's simple. It's a water, it's two hydro molecules, one oxygen molecule. knew you couldn't be trusted! No! Get away! <laughs> 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 what are you looking at? They're the problem, not me! How could you? You said cutie marks were evil! You said special talents led to pain and heartache! They do! Don't you see? Look at them! And why? Why did you take ours and not give up your own? I... I had to, you fools! How could I collect your cutie marks without my magic? But the staff has all the magic we need! The staff is a piece of wood I found in the desert. It's my magic that makes all this possible. You'd all still be living your miserable lives, thinking you're better than every pony else, if it weren't for my magical abilities. I brought you friendship. I brought you equality. I created harmony! You lied to us! <laughs> so what? Everything else I've said is true. The only way to be happy is if we're all equal. Except for you. Every pony has unique talents and gifts. And when we share them with each other, that's how we... Quiet! <laughs> Either we're all equal, or none of us are. <laughs> <laughs> All right. No one will 
find me in here, in my house, that oh, no. saw me run into. <laughs> Where did she go? It's a mystery. I don't, I, I don't know. I, no, I was so taken back from that quiet. It was so out of nowhere. Like, oh, she got away. Oh, man. Man, Sterling, look at her. Surly. Yeah. She's so cute. Yes. Good quick. So, so adorbs. Oh, uh, so, you know, you know, this character is really great, you know, it's, it's so sweet. I have no idea what a big deal that quiet would be when we, when we recorded it. Have you, Apparently have, it's a big deal, you don't have, tell the princess of friendship yep. to shut her trap. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. Well, would it be too much trouble to just get a bit of quiet over all these Well, problems? I have to have somebody to interrupt, so. Okay, well, you know what, Kelly, I'll tell you this much. I, I, I think Star- Quiet! <laughs> 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 I think one of my other favorite lines was, the staff is a piece of wood I found in the desert. I was like, come on. <laughs> I could just see her like wandering out there going, yeah, that'll do. One second, hang on. Hang on. Hang on. <laughs> Boy, that escalated quickly. I mean, that really got our hand fast. It did, didn't it? Yeah. Oh, so uh, anyway, I got some, just a final thoughts here. Whether she is a hero or a villain, Kelly brings the same energy, range, and character to any role that she plays. And with a diverse cast of characters under her belt, it's no wonder why she is one of anime's most treasured actresses. And with what the future will hold, who can really say? All I know is that if, if you do that to every director, you'll get every role. I guarantee. <laughs> Just bully them into giving me the part. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, I will say, I, it's, I've been so touched by the reception I've received and how a people kind of love to hate Starlight. I think that's the best compliment I could receive because she's kind of designed for that. So it's been tons of fun getting to play her and... and um, Maybe we will play her in the future. In the future. We can only hope. It's still a piece. <laughs> Moose. <laughs> so, um, I'm, I'm, we have like a minute or two for one or two quick questions. Does anyone here have a question for Kelly they'd like to ask? Anything? Uh, you. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, yep. Come here. Tell, tell us your name. Okay. Uh, my name is. I can hear you. Just, 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 just a shout out, Alex. Okay, well, uh, my name is Alex, and I just have a quick question about your role as uh, Starlight. Yes. So this big bad villain had the main six at her hooks. How do you feel that she got defeated by a drop of water? Oh! 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 Lots of water for that burn! <laughs> Did everyone hear that? Everyone in the back <laughs> Um... <laughs> When the mighty fall, they fall hard. It's always, yep, yeah, it's always those little moments, isn't it? And by the, the by the meekest, shyest one out of all of them, too. Starlight got age two. She needed oh, that indelible yeah. age. She was, uh, she didn't research her makeup properly. She needed to talk to someone who knew more about it. She needed that. Well, you know, you know, she's Sharpie or something. Kind of hard Tattoos. to find. Kind of hard to find, you know, L'Oreal for ponies. And, right. and, you know, you got to find the right skin tone and such, you know. Maybe it's magic. Maybe it's Maybelline. I think it was divine intervention. I think she was meant to, meant to get caught. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, my my life was from Fluttershy was, what are you waiting for? Just do it! Oh. To work up to her big, hey, to get her big moment. That's right. Um, uh, we have time for one que more question. You. So, Kelly, uh, obviously you kind of knew what you were getting into when you auditioned for Ponies, but with all yes. the other stuff, like Hero 108, did you know what you were getting into? Um, did everyone hear that in the back there? Did I know what I was getting into when, with all the other jobs I've done? Uh, sometimes I do. Hero 108, like I said, I had no idea. Uh, the script was crazy. I thought I had no idea how they're going to animate this. And, um, but that's kind of what being a voiceover actor is. You go in and you're like, okay, I guess I'll try this out. We just did another show called Pirate Express with Atomic, where I've recently been able to see them. They've just started airing in Canada. And there's tons of extra stuff they've animated that we weren't even aware of in the studio. So most of the work happens after we're done recording. It's when the animators get a hold of things and start going, yeah, we'll add this little thing in and this little thing in. So that's the fun thing. Our the yeah. Well, um, uh, hey, we do one? let's do two more. You guys. I'm, 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 
Yeah. Let's do these. Let's do these guys. All right, you guys, and that's it. Yeah. Um, first, first, first in the derby hat, the awesome derby hat with the Apple Family shirt. It's awesome. I can't say no. You've waited so patiently. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hello, Hello. Kelly. Uh, I come from across the border, Canada. Brandon here. Oh, oh hey, how you, how you yeah. doing there? You doing yeah. good there? Yeah, <laughs> Kelly. Uh, one thing I'm not sure many people know, but. Was the, you and Sam Vincent recorded for the the cutie mo the the season five premiere, and that reminds me, you two had actually worked on another show where you two worked together, but it was about paranormal activity. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Yeah. Mark mystery. Yeah. Moose. Yeah. Moose. I, I'm not sure how many people in this room would know the show, but um, did you guys actually get to record in the booth together, and did you maybe make some jokes about how your you guys are? reuniting again for another voice role? Um, well, I've worked with Sam a lot since Martin Mysteries. So we've worked on a bunch of stuff together, but uh, recording Martin was really fun. It was always super goofy in the room. We were encouraged to do lots of ad lib, and um, yeah, that was another one. But and, and, and in that show, I screamed at Sam all the time also. So I guess maybe that's tight. And you got to work with a caveman. I did. So yeah. how do you not like that? <laughs> uh, well, one, person, one more question. Thank uh, you. Uh, yes. In the Doctor Who shirt. Mm -hmm. Ooh, good teacher. For going over, but you know, it's worth it though. Is there any yeah, is there any voiceovers you want to do in the future? Um, all of them. Yeah. <laughs> Can you guys make that happen? <laughs> I will work for change. Um, no, I yeah, I don't know. There's nothing. I've I've been lucky to play a lot of amazing amazing characters and amazing um, stories so I don't know I'll get I'll do any job that anybody throws yeah. at me basically she, she will work for money she will work for honey she will work for you do to little Lou <laughs> <laughs> well guys unfortunately we are out of time guys give Kelly Sheridan one final Thank you so much. And you know what? we're all equal some of us more than others yeah. all right careful got the water <laughs> And, uh, you know, hello, 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 some applause for the host, because he was awesome! Yay. Yay. And our tech crew, thanks guys. And our tech exactly. crew, yeah. made it run as smoothly as possible. Well, uh... I'm gonna yeah. dash, rainbow dash. Yeah, yes, uh, guys, uh, thank you guys for coming out here. Uh, be sure to check out Kelly. You can actually follow her on Twitter at K Sheridan Voice, I believe. Yes, that's right. And of course, give me a follow at the Dennis Daniel, and enjoy the rest of your time here at Everfree, because it's the last... I'll be signing autographs from 1 to 3, so come by and say hi.